What's going on, smart people? Now, I've been doing an ongoing series on what to expect for year one, year two, year three, and year four physics. Uh, but if you want to take a look at all of the classes all at once and not just be limited to the physics classes as a physics major, then this might be the video for you. Now, we're going to be taking a look at the ODU physics curriculum. That's where I went to undergrad, so that's what I'm most familiar with. I think it goes without saying that, depending on the university, uh, this curriculum might change a little bit. So if you've had a different experience or you know someone who did, comment how your experience differs from this uh, curriculum that I'll be showing. So let's get started. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to hack, we're going to neural network, we're, we're going to Google. We're going to Google ODU physics curriculum. And it's going to be the first thing that pops up. It says undergraduate program curriculum. Click on it, and it's going to take us to something that has five tracks on it. And uh, what these five tracks correspond to is where do you think you'll be after college? Are you going to do, or after undergrad? Do you want to do research? Do you want to go into industry? Do you want to teach? All that good stuff. Track A is the one associated with research. It's also the one that you have to take the most physics classes. So we're going to click on that one. So if we go down, there's a little link that says track A and it brings us right to all of the classes that you have to take as a physics major. Uh, on the left, it goes through the gen eds. Everyone has to take gen eds. It's just something that you have to get through. So that includes your English, communication, math. Uh, well, that's if you don't test out of the lower math. Uh, we've got human creativity. So what's funny about the human creativity is it's like, you. it's not you being creative, though. It's like, surveying other people who were creative. Like I had to take art history instead of like a composition class. That's, I thought that was dumb. <laughs> but anyways, uh, history, literature, all that good stuff. Then if we come over to the right, it's the actual physics courses, the actual STEM courses, really. So it starts off with math, Calc 1 through Calc 3, Calc 1 being, uh, you know, what are limits? What are derivatives? What are integrals? Calc 2, uh, you know, a little bit more involved integration techniques are introduced. Calc 3, everything in Calc 2, but in three dimensions. Uh, and also, in, it's sort of an introduction to vector calculus. Differential equations, you have functions, functions change, how do you relate the functions to how they change, and how their change changes. Uh, math 316 or 401. 316 is linear algebra, uh, so it's different ways of expressing linear systems of equations, things like that, uh, abstract vector spaces. 401 is partial differential equations. Differential equations, but in three dimensions. This is a lot of math classes. Uh, so what a lot of physics majors end up doing is you realize that you can take these math classes plus about, I think it's two more, and you can pick up a math minor in addition to your physics degree. So with these math classes, I took all of these math classes, and then I, I took math 316 and 401. So I took linear algebra and partial differential equations. And then I think I only had to take one more math class, which was, they call it Calc 4 at ODU. Uh, but really, it's just an introduction to real analysis. So, and that's just really um, how to write proofs. Moving on, then we get into Chemistry 1 and 2. You've got your stoichiometry, your dimensional analysis, which is a absolutely essential skill to have or technique to know, to be able to understand if your units work. Uh, electron configuration. Then we get into CS150, Intro to Programming. At ODU, this is done in C++. Uh, it's it's kind of a tough class, I'm going to be honest. <clears throat> it's not actually inherently difficult, but it's a four-credit class. And it's a class that comes along with a lab, a recitation, and a lecture. And you get grades for all of that. And you have projects all the time on top of homework, online quizzes. So there's a lot of work. Uh, CS150, if you do end up going to ODU, um, you're going to have to put a lot of time into that class. Then we're finally getting into physics. So University Physics 1 and 2, that's your just introductory classical mechanics and then your introductory electricity and magnetism and circuit analysis, things like that. Those are calculus-based courses, but really there's not that much calculus in them. There's more in the second semester. Uh, than the first. Let me get into physics 303. That is, it says lab. It's offered in the, by the way, if you see these F's and these S's, that means spring and fall. If you don't see those on this curriculum sheet, that means it's offered every semester. Uh, so now we're on to 303. That's the physics lab, one of the physics labs. But really what it is, is it's a course in 
electronics. It's a course in building circuits and using things like oscilloscopes, function generators, Arduino, uh, things like that. Physics 323, modern physics, that's essentially uh, every physics major's first little introduction to special relativity and quantum mechanics. It's very surface level. In my opinion, this class, uh, it's really only useful for people who aren't track A because you get this and more in the actual courses in like quantum and uh, e and M. But I don't, I don't know, it, it, you still have to take it. Modern physics, they introduce things like special relativity, quantum, atomic, and all of the specialty courses. Uh, but you don't really go in depth with anything, at least not at ODU. Uh, then you also have a course in math methods. This is the math associated with a lot of the physics classes that you'll be taking. So this is actually a really cool class because it's one class and they split the class up into a bunch of different sections, really. And it's all taught by a physics professor, but the physics professor teaches you math, right? So one week you'll be learning differential equations from a physics professor, then another week you'll be doing vector calculus. So it's, it's pretty cool having math taught from the perspective of a, of a physicist. Then uh, physics 319, that is analytical mechanics, but really that's classical mechanics. Uh, so that introduces concepts like Lagrangian, uh, Hamiltonian mechanics. That's a pretty tough class, I'm going to be honest. I had a hard time with classical mechanics. I think most people do. Uh, then we also have experimental methods. This is actually experimental physics. And uh, what we did in this class was we really redid a lot of the famous experiments throughout history. So me and my lab partner did the double slit experiment. We did uh, measured the ratio of E over M. Uh, I think we also did like the photoelectric effect. So this is an actual course in experimental physics, which I think is useful if you think that's something that you might want to do, which I don't. <laughs> then we get into electromagnetism 1 and 2. Electromagnetism 1, it's pretty much electrostatics and magnetostatics, so charges that aren't moving relative to each other. Uh, once you get into ENM2, you let things move around. If these charged particles are moving around relative to each other, oh, introduce relativity also. So ENM2 is also typically once or when you are introduced to special relativity more formally. Uh, then we get into quantum 1 and 2. Quantum 1 is effectively, uh, let's solve the Schrodinger equation. And here's all the ways that we can solve it on paper. Quantum 2 is, here's how we can solve the Schrodinger equation uh, approximately. That's not quite correct, but really what I'm getting at is quantum 2 is just perturbation theory, uh, variational methods, and what else? A lot of addition of angular momentum, many body systems, sort of. I really liked quantum 2. Then we also have thermal physics. Now this is thermal and statistical physics, so or statistical thermodynamics. So you get into classical thermodynamics, so describing thermodynamic processes macroscopically and then you switch gears a little bit and learn how to describe those same processes by sort of averaging over uh, a smaller set of them so using statistics microscopically on microscopic systems to describe the same thermodynamic processes so you talk about things like microstates macrostates uh, and then also in addition to all that you will take a uh, I think it's a 300 level elective and a 400 level elective. Uh, my 300 level elective, I took astrophysics, which was pretty cool, but it was also pretty surface level. You know, it's not like we were solving the field equations in it or anything like that. It was really, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. It wasn't too bad. And then uh, the other, the 400 level elective that I took was atomic physics. I took it because that's the one that was offered. One thing with ODU is they offer specialty courses, but they don't offer them every semester, and they uh, don't offer the same ones all the time, if that makes sense. So last semester, for example, they offered accelerator physics. The semester before that, they offered atomic physics. Sometimes they'll offer nuclear. It's, it's a little uh, inconsistent, but it is what it is. 
And then, on top of all that, every, every physics major at ODU also has to do a senior thesis, which is effectively uh, a physics student's opportunity to learn what research is like if you don't get an internship. So I did my senior thesis uh, with an atomic theorist, and we I essentially just wrote a code to calculate cross-sections, which was cool. I had fun doing it. Uh, what else is there? And it also, I guess, gives you the curriculum, or not the curriculum, but the credits needed in order to pick up a physics minor if you don't want to do the major. So it just says 12 credits at 300 and 400 level, I guess all this stuff. But I guess that about sums it up for this curriculum. Now there's other information on the page that talks about like what grades you have to get in order to get credit, but really I just wanted to have in one video all the classes that you have to take as a physics major. Um, if you're interested in what the other tracks have to take, I'll post a link in the description that takes you to the page that asks what track you want to be. But I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you're a new physics major and you're going to decide what track you're going to be, let me know in the comment section what track you think you'll be, and I'll see you guys there.